Hi, my name is Annette. I'm a real estate agent in the state of Colorado. And I'm Jesse with American Radon Mitigation. In this video, we're going to cover some of the common questions we get around radon and real estate. Ready to get started? Yes. All right, let's do it. A question my clients always ask me is what is radon? Why should I even test for it? So that's a great question, Annette. Uh, radon is a naturally occurring radioactive gas that comes from the decay of uranium found in the rock and soil below your home. It is then naturally drawn into your home and it's the second leading cause of lung cancer behind smoking. A lot of my clients have never heard of radon, let alone that it's the second leading cause of lung cancer in the U.S. So it's so important to test for it. And how do you test for it? So typically in a real estate transaction, you would test during that inspection period. So you only have a short window of time and you would typically hire a radon professional, you know, that could be um, a mitigation specific company that does radon testing. There are some companies that just do radon testing. And then there are a lot of home inspectors that also do radon testing. If radon levels come back high during a test, what do you do to get rid of it? So typically you would install a radon mitigation system and a mitigation system works by overcoming that natural suction that your home creates on the soil and drawing that radon into the mitigation system through a vent pipe and exhausting it out into the atmosphere above your home. So you're stopping it from entering. Should anyone buy a house with radon? Uh, yeah, well, basically every house, unless it's built on stilts, is gonna have some level of radon. The outdoor level in the Midwest is 0 0.4. So you're gonna have some level of radon. You can't get to zero. Um, so yeah, any house is gonna have it. It's just a matter of what the levels are and any house can be fixed. We haven't run into one that we cannot fix. That's great. The EPA states that if you're under four, four PICO carries, then that should be fine, right? Uh, yeah, that's a big, kind of a big misconception, I think. So there is no safe level of radon. The lower you can get it, the better off you are. So the EPA says you should consider mitigation if you're between two and four pico carries, and they strongly recommend mitigation over four pico carries. Why should a buyer not leave it up to the seller to choose the radon mitigation company? That's a great question, and I love that question because when we started out, we were working for the seller just like most radon mitigation companies are. And for me, I would rather not install a system if we can't install it the right way. And what we found is that most sellers are looking for the cheapest solution to get them below four Pico carries. And I think that is a huge disservice to the family that's moving into the home. And the reasons why are typically the cheapest system is going to be an outside system. So you've got an ugly pipe and fan on, up on the side of the house. And if you're in the cold climates like we are in Minnesota, that system is going to be susceptible to freeze up during the winter. And if it freezes, that means your radon system is not going to be working for maybe a few weeks out of the year when your radon levels are going to be the highest. So aesthetics is a big one. The second one is operating cost. It's easy for me or anybody else as the mitigator to put on a big fan, overpower all the air leaks in the house that maybe aren't sealed or easily sealed. And that's gonna maybe get you below four but it is gonna leave the homeowner with a very high operating cost potentially that could be tens of thousands of dollars over the life of that home. Um, the other thing to consider is when you're the cheapest company, you might work on volume. So you're trying to do two or three houses as a crew in a day, and maybe you're doing, you're spending a few hours there um, installing the mitigation system, and you know the quality might not just be there if you're only spending a few hours there. So Annette, who should pay for a radon mitigation system in a real estate transaction? Well, it depends what market we're in. Let's say we're in a hot seller's market. All right, if it's an extreme seller's market, you will have little to no negotiation power. You might even have to offer up your firstborn. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and if we're in a buyer's market? If we're in a buyer's market and you're purchasing a home, that's great because you will have negotiation power and your real estate agent will be working on your behalf to have the seller credit or pay a portion or the full amount of the mitigation system. What if a buyer purchases a home, installs the radon mitigation system and their levels don't go down? So that's gonna be different for every mitigation company that's involved. Most mitigation companies offer a guarantee below a certain level of radon, um, and it's four picocaries for most companies. Um, 
But one of the reasons we like to do in-person estimates and not just a phone estimate or something by email is because every home is different. You might have a home with a crawl space, a home with a basement, a home with drain tile, a home without drain tile, and that's gonna add different layers of complexity to engineering and installing a mitigation system for that specific home. So every home is different, therefore the price on every home, the price of mitigation is gonna be uh, drastically different. Um, so it's nice to be able to get your eyes out on the property and come up with some solutions that are gonna work for the homeowner. And we can go through those different options, like, hey, here's what it costs to go on the side of the house. Here's the downfalls to doing that um, versus, you know, hey, the fan's gonna be in the garage or the house attic and it's gonna keep the curb appeal of the house. Um, so it's nice to be able to convey all that with the homeowner rather than just they show up after the mitigation system's been installed and it's like, ooh, that wasn't there before. That's ugly, I don't like that. Is it safe to move into a home before a radon mitigation system is installed? Well, one thing to keep in mind is you have your dose, so what the radon level is, and then your exposure time. And most people forget about that exposure time. So if you have a you know high dose, but it's for a very short period of time, it's probably not gonna have a huge impact. Um, I had a, a guy that we installed the system for several years ago. We were booked out a few weeks and his radon levels were like 15. It was the dead of winter. He's like, man, I, I don't wanna wait that long. Is there anything I can do to lower my radon levels in the meantime? I said, hey, just try cracking that basement window a little bit. So he cranked that window open a little bit and his radon levels went from 15 down to five. So wow. that was a very easy solution. Granted, his heating bill is a little bit more, but it gave him the peace of mind um, that he was looking for. Yeah, that's great. Well, Annette, I want to thank you for your time and lending your real estate expertise to us. Oh, thank you for having me. You're welcome. And until next time, I'm Jesse with American Radon Mitigation here with Annette Oshana. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> Shake it out. <laughs> that was not good. Good? Yeah. All right. That's a wrap. That's a wrap.